This morning on CBS 2 News, more unknown flying objects shot down over the U.S. What we know about these latest airspace invasions. Plus, one week after a deadly earthquake shakes Turkey, why neighbors there aren't giving up hope on their search for survivors. And the Caldwell School Board meets again today, why police are giving out a warning to those set to attend. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Monday, February 13th, 2023. I'm Ashley Carter. And I'm Sarah Jacobson filling in for Vasily Varlamos this morning. Yeah, and Ashley, I hope you enjoyed these warmer temperatures yeah. over the weekend. Yeah, it was very warm. It almost felt like a spring weekend, but is that about to change? Exactly. We're calling yeah. that fall spring, folks, yeah. because second winter heading our way, yeah. sadly. But hey, it's a good news for our folks up on the mountains and, of course, our snowpack. But yeah. this morning, we are tracking a cold front. It is chilly out there, folks. Still the middle of winter, despite what it felt like over the weekend. We're sitting in 30 degrees right now. Winds out of the southeast at about 10 miles an hour. That's taken us down to a feels like temperature of about 21 degrees this morning, folks. So again, yeah, you want to make sure you grab that jacket and your gloves as you're heading out the door by 9 a.m. We are going to be sitting right at freezing, getting up to the mid 40s for our highs today, folks. But that's right about the time that cold front is expected to bring precipitation into the region and much colder air throughout the day. So we are looking at breezy conditions throughout the day, but that is going to change to rain and snow after that cold front pushes through. So it's going to bring more precipitation to the region, folks. It's looking like best chance will be right around our commute this evening, folks. In the Treasure Valley, you can expect rain, though our friends above the the 3500 foot mark can expect a rain snow mix. High temperatures today though getting into the mid 40s for our highs. Friends in the mountains looking at low 30s, though some are going to be into the upper 30s. That cold front, though, folks, will be chilly, and it is going to quickly bring down those temperatures. So today, 46 degrees. We're going to see breezy conditions turning to rain for the Treasure Valley to snow for our mountains. Overnight tonight, it will be chilly with overnight lows 27 degrees. And tomorrow, partly cloudy skies with a high of only 39 degrees. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll talk about the timing of this cold front and what you can expect as far as precipitation and snow accumulation in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Monday morning, as you can see, everything looking nice and calm. Not too many folks out on the roads yet. And not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down on your Monday morning drive. So when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And Boise police are looking for an endangered woman. 60-year-old Brenda Hardinger walked away from a care facility on West Smoke Ranch Avenue in Boise. Police say she has dementia. She has gray hair, green eyes, and was last seen wearing a cowboy hat and blue jeans. And she expressed interest in going to Yellowstone. Police say it's possible she may be hitchhiking. If you see her, please call 911 or Boise police at 208-377-6790. And questions are growing about what is happening in the skies above North America. In the last eight days, four flying objects have been shot down by the U.S. military. While one is suspected to have been spying on military sites, officials haven't said what the others may be. Jared Hill has more from New York. The U.S. military shot down yet another unidentified flying object Sunday. That marks a total of four takedowns, starting with the Chinese spy balloon that was destroyed over a week ago off the coast of South Carolina. What's gone on the last, uh, you know, two weeks or so, 10 days, has been uh, nothing short of um, craziness. The latest above the Great Lakes region in Michigan. The Pentagon says it's likely the same object that caused airspace over Montana to be shut down on Saturday. That's also when Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau asked the U.S. to shoot a different unidentified object out of the sky. That one above the Yukon. It represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft. Uh, so I give the order to take it down. In Alaska Friday, the U.S. took down an object that's said to be the size of a small bus. In the past, the U.S. just hasn't paid much attention to those balloons. But this Chinese balloon was, was a game changer. That one suspected of spying over nuclear sites taken down last weekend. But officials aren't sure or aren't saying where the others came from or what they were doing. 
A Department of Defense official says they've been more closely scrutinizing U.S. airspace in recent weeks, which might explain the increase in activity. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, lawmakers are considering tougher regulations to stop U.S. technology from getting in the hands of the Chinese military. Jared Hill, CBS News. And today marks one week since the devastating earthquake struck in Tur Turkey and Syria. The death toll has rose well above 30,000 and many more are feared dead. The prime window for rescue now closed, but hopes not out just yet. In Turkey, searchers rescued a father and his 11-year-old daughter from the rubble more than 140 hours after they were buried. And rescuers pulled a woman alive from the rubble some 175 hours after the first of two major quakes struck the region. And happening today here in Idaho, the Caldwell School Board is holding a meeting, but police warning those attending to be respectful. This comes after the last regularly scheduled meeting broke out in chaos following a proposed policy on gender identity. On today's agenda, the proposed policy is listed under the superintendent report for discussion and information. The meeting is being held at the Caldwell School District office starting at 7 p.m. Caldwell's chief of police says if there is violence or threats of violence, police will take appropriate action against those individuals. And Idaho's snowpack is not keeping the pace that it set in December, but it's still above average. Meteorologists at the National Weather Service station in Boise are optimistic this year's snowpack will be a good one. Across the southern part of the state, so an above normal snowpack, especially in the southern half, is, is really good news for our overall water supply situation. There's still a chance, a really good chance, actually, that the uh, Panhandle region, the northern half of the state, catches up to normal. Now, one winter won't pull Idaho out of the long-term drought, but it is good for reservoirs. You can go to our website to see comparisons of this year to years past. And Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and there are an array of events this week to help you celebrate. Romancing the Pen at the Old Idaho State Penitentiary is tomorrow from noon to 9 p.m. Adult admission is $10 each, or purchase pairs at a special $2 for $14 price. Cookie and beer pairing at the Loose Screw Brewing is from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. Tango dancing at the warehouse is from 7 to 9 p.m. That event is free for all ages. And Love is on the Rocks at the Knitting Factory goes from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Tickets start at $15. For more information and to learn more about events happening this week, you can head to IdahoNews.com. Well, the Chiefs are now Super Bowl 57 champions. The final score, 38-35. to Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes says it took his team some time to really have fun playing, which helped them clinch the win. Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts says it was turnovers that impacted their game. You have to enjoy this moment. You can't, you can't let the moment overtake you. Um, and um, I thought the guys did that in the second half, and they fought to the very end. Um, and that's all you can ask. Uh, these guys leave everything they have on the football field. This makes the Chiefs' second title in four seasons. And stay tuned, we have a closer look at the fan reaction overnight coming up, along with information on why one thing was absent this year, the presidential pregame interview. For the latest in-between and after newscasts, you can always head to IdahoNews.com. All right, congratulations to the Chiefs. Definitely a great game. Yes, it was it was a nail biter for mm -hmm. sure. Also, a nail biter is the change of temperatures that we are about to experience. Yes, it was a beautiful weekend, Ashley. Lots of sunshine, but now we have a storm system headed our way in the form of a pretty potent cold front. It's going to cool things down once again, folks, but I want to first lighten up your morning with our ski report because all of our areas saw a good one to two inches in increases of base depth over the weekend, which is some good news, folks. Also, areas hanging on to what they already have. The only area we are seeing kind of decreasing right now, folks, is the Jackson Hole area. So again, we have about one to four inches heading our way for our mountains this morning, folks, and it's all because of this front right here on our screen. You can see it in this high level cloud deck. Again, this is the cold front that's going to move through the region, opening us up to low pressure that's beginning to just push into the Seattle area. Again, not expected to hit us until our evening commute, folks. This is a look at our precipitation chances over the next 12 hours. It'll be breezy throughout the day today, folks, but that is going to usher in that cold front and that precipitation just in time for your evening commute. So be ready for that. Have your windshield wipers ready. That wind advisory, though, is in effect through Tuesday at 3 a.m. We're going to see winds 20 to 30 miles an hour with gusts up to 55 miles per hour possible in some areas. So folks,
folks, just make sure if you have something you don't want blowing away, make sure it is secured outdoors. We're talking gates, um, anything out on your property. Again, winter weather advisory through Tuesday at 11 p.m. for our friends down in the southeastern side of the state. If you're traveling that way, definitely expect snow covered roads. So today we begin that roller coaster. We're always talking about once again, 46 for the high today. That cold front going to take us down on Tuesday to 39, well below that average high. Then slowly but surely, folks, we begin to slowly make our way back up to that average high temperature. So folks, Folks, again, it's going to be a breezy day today, so be ready for that. It's definitely going to feel biting at times with that cold air moving in out of the northwest. But as far as this morning and your morning commute, everything is looking cold, calm and clear. Yeah, definitely cold is different from this weekend. Like we said earlier, mm -hmm. kind of felt like spring this weekend, it but <laughs> luckily, luckily to see temperatures kind of climbing back up. Yeah, slowly but surely. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Monday morning, as you can see, everything looking nice and smooth. Not too many folks out on the road starting their week yet. And not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, gas prices nationwide are starting a bit lower this week, but here in Idaho expecting to be paying a bit more. Our average now at 367 a gallon. The national average is 342, which is five cents lower than the prices were at the start of last week. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up in Boise is going to be the Sinclair Station on North Coal Road. It's listed at 349 a gallon there. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, fans celebrating overnight after a close Super Bowl. What's next after the game? Plus, a surprising absence from the big game, why the White House says there was no presidential pregame interview. And it's time now for our question of the day, but first, let's take a look at Friday's question. A survey says about 20% of men use this as a computer password. What is it? That answer was their favorite sports team. Now let's take a look at today's question. Super Bowl weekend is the slowest weekend of the year for this. Ooh, what could it be? You're waking up with CBS 2 News Ontario today, a high of 44 degrees, but a breezy cold front going to bring some rain, cooling us to cloudy skies overnight, 28 degrees. That lightning not supposed to be there, folks, just cloud cover. And tomorrow, high of 49 with partly cloudy skies. <laughs> well, Kansas City fans erupting as their team takes home the trophy. We're looking live this morning in Kansas City, Missouri, as the team heads back home after an intense game. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes was the game's MVP, despite taking a hit on his recently injured ankle. Fans spending the night celebrating after a nail-biting game. It was definitely nerve-wracking, but we did it. Yeah. And of course, Eagles fans are less enthused. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah, it's a tough one. Kansas City has already released plans for its championship parade, which will take place on Wednesday. Schools in the Kansas City metro area have canceled classes to allow students and teachers to watch and participate. And last night's Super Bowl had plenty of action and excitement, but what one thing it did not have? A presidential pregame interview. National correspondent Cuisine Furzao explains why we didn't see one this year. It is a, a great honor and privilege to introduce President George W. Bush, who joins us from the White House Rose Garden. A relatively new tradition, the Super Bowl presidential pregame interview was carried on by President Barack Obama, who twice sat down with Fox's Bill O'Reilly before the big game. Do you deny oh, that you're a man who wants to redistribute wealth? Absolutely. You As did President Donald Trump, though in 2018 he opted out of an interview with NBC when that network was hosting the game. Last year, President Joe Biden did sit down with NBC and back on Fox this year, there was hope from some he would keep the tradition alive. The White House insisting President Biden did agree to do an interview with Fox Soul, a streaming service that caters to black Americans. But Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre tweeted Fox canceled the interview, a claim Fox appeared to dispute later, though the interview never happened. 
Since becoming president, Joe Biden has not granted any interviews to Fox, the top-watched cable network, which is also often highly critical of his administration. Still, some are calling the decision not to sit down with them before the Super Bowl a missed opportunity. Why in the world would a president who apparently intends to run again lose the opportunity to speak to 100 million people, which comprises Democrats, Republicans, independents, and they want to see him look good. Richard Vatz, Towson University professor of rhetoric and communication, says it could have helped President Biden with messaging. I think he could have tied this to his unity theme, that I am the president of unity, and this is a, this is a perfect example of the country coming together with a great professional clash of two great teams who have fought all the way to the Super Bowl. But between the response to the alleged Chinese spy balloon, a federal investigation into his son Hunter Biden's finances, and a myriad of Republican criticisms of the 46th president, some say he'll work on the messaging in his own way. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. And the Super Bowl also giving restaurants and businesses a boost. And the business boom isn't over this week. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, they're expecting to see another spike in sales. So as the Super Bowl crowd leaves, many spending today getting ready. Make sure the restaurant is nice and beautiful with roses, decorations, all that good stuff. So it takes, it takes uh, I would say, a village <laughs> to make sure that it all comes through. Bookings for upscale dinner reservations in the U.S. surged 228% on Valentine's Day, according to one survey by Open Table. I want some of those sunglasses. I know, I was looking at those. <laughs> How cute. And we could have used them this past weekend with all that sunshine we had. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> needed some type of sunglasses. But folks, the cloud cover mm -hmm. and the cold front now moving in. Yeah, it's going to cool down. But let's take a live look outside this morning, folks. We are waking up chilly. We are near freezing this morning, though we are seeing clear skies. A nice sight ahead of this cold front expected to move through this afternoon, bringing breezy conditions already seeing winds about 10 miles an hour out there this morning, folks. So again, if you're heading out, it's feeling like about 21 degrees. So just make sure again, you're bundling those kiddos up as well as yourself. So for today, 6 a.m. 30 degrees, 7 a.m. 29 and by 8 a.m. 28 degrees. Looking at that cloud cover beginning to move in. So let's talk about this cold front because we are seeing again, you can see right there that defining cold front right there, folks. It's going to bring this low pressure we see right here into the region. It's fast moving, folks. That's why we're already seeing breezy conditions this morning. But that is going to bring us a strong trough once again bringing us the chance of some evening rain and some snow for our mountains a good one to four inches possible for some areas we'll talk snow accumulations now west central mountains anywhere between one to four inches is possible with this system along with breezy conditions though they aren't a part of our wind advisory we'll also talk about that in a moment boise mountains one to two inches though here in the treasure valley a little too far down and a little too much warming so we're looking at trace to less than a half of an inch folks mostly we're just looking at rain high temperatures just too warm to sustain any of that snowfall this low down. But again, a look up here, we're going to be seeing that snow as well as rain moving in around your evening commute, folks. So be ready for that with your windshield wipers. We'll still see just some of that scattered snow shower up in the mountains, but we are going to start to see clearing as we head into your Valentine's Day. So let's take a look at our seven day forecast 46 for the high today, but that cold front quickly going to take temperatures down for Valentine's Day. We are looking a little cooler, 39 degrees for our daytime high with partly cloudy skies. We should see most of that precipitation moved out by the early morning hours, folks. And after that, we begin to slowly warm once again as we see clearing and a little more sunshine peeking out. But at least for the next 48 hours, be ready for some cloud cover and at least that rain for us here in the Treasure Valley. Yeah, and I feel like we haven't said this in a bit, but you're going to want to bundle up as this cold front moves <laughs> in. Yeah, folks, it's going to get colder, especially this morning, already about 10 mile an hour winds. So. Oh, yeah, prepare yourselves. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there at 521 this Monday morning, as you can see, everything looking nice and calm out there. A quiet start to this week. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. And as you can see on your screen, not much happening out on our roads. So when you hop in the car and start your Monday morning, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, Valentine's Day is around the corner. The chocolate one study says may make the perfect gift for your sweetheart. And later, Americans being told to leave Russia this morning. The warning from officials here in the U.S. This.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, COVID-19 is still spreading in the U.S., but the amount of daily cases is declining. According to the New York Times COVID tracker, we're now averaging under 40,000 cases per day. Hospitalized COVID-19 patients also down 11% in the past two weeks. And daily deaths have declined 15% to an average of 442 per day. And for people infected with COVID-19, Paxlovid is pro proving to be a lifesaver. A study at the University of Colorado finds the antiviral remains highly effective on Omicron variants. Researchers tracked 28,000 patients with risk factors and found Paxlovid significantly re reduced rates of hospitalization and death. And it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, and what better time to spoil yourself or that special someone with some chocolate? New research out of the UK sheds light on why we find it so seductive. CBS's Ian Lee reports from London. Welcome to Moss. My name is Aaron. I'll be your chocolatier for today. Anthony and Trenna are massive chocoholics. The charm of chocolate lured them to this London cooking class. What's what to love about chocolate? Different varieties, the different flavors you can get. But chocolate's power of pleasure puzzled scientists at the University of Leeds in England. We've been looking into the texture of the chocolates, lubrication or tactile sensation, rather than the taste. That melt-in-the-mouth feeling led researchers to create an artificial tongue, which cracked the code, revealing it all comes down to the chocolate's fat. Why is it nice on the tongue? It makes it smooth, it makes it slippery, it, makes it, it reduces the resistance. Scientists say that lubrication makes for a more enjoyable experience, and it doesn't come as a surprise to chief chocolatier Paul Stradling. It's to do with that natural, the fat, the cocoa butter that's in there, and it's actually the only natural fat in the world that melts the body temperature. Researchers found that smooth sensation comes down to the location of the fat, not the amount. But if you put more fats on the top surface of the chocolates, then we wouldn't need much of a fat in the body of the chocolates. And that got them wondering if you need fat at all. So you replace the fats with the proteins to get the same texture. Exactly, yes. And that would be healthier? It would be more nutritious for sure. Letting people indulge their love of chocolate without the love handles. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Researchers are also experimenting to see if tweaking the placement of fat could improve other nutritional content of other foods like ice cream, margarine, and cheese. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News, Idaho's snowpack won't be enough to get, get us out of the drought, Why experts still have an optimistic outlook. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Of course, after all your favorites, you can join us right back here for CBS 2 News at 10 p.m. And don't forget about our question of the day. Today's question is, Super Bowl weekend is the slowest weekend of the year for this. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, one week after a deadly earthquake shakes Turkey, why neighbors there aren't giving up hope on their search for survivors. Plus, the Caldwell School Board meets again today, why police aren't giving out a warning to those set to attend. Plus, the Chiefs taking home the Super Bowl, what the star players from both sides have to say about the game. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Happy Monday. Thanks for waking up with CBS 2 News this morning. Right now we are sitting at 30 degrees in downtown Boise. Winds out of the southeast at about 10 miles an hour, folks. That's taking us down to a feels like temperature of 21 degrees. Folks, we are awaiting a cold front that will be potent, bringing much cooler conditions. We are already seeing across the region. Make sure you bundle up as you're heading out this morning. As you're heading out the door, though, temperatures will be in near freezing by 9 a.m. Looking at just that 32 degree mark. We are going to be warming today to highs in the 
the mid 40s, but that cold front expected to move through in the afternoon. It's brought a wind advisory. We'll talk about that in a moment, but it will quickly cool us into the evening, bringing a chance of rain for the Treasure Valley, but some nice accumulations for our mountains. We'll break that down coming up in just a second, but that chance of precipitation looking good just right around your evening commute. So make sure you have your windshield wipers ready. We will see that dwindle as we head into your Valentine's Day, though. High temperatures today getting into the mid 40s, low 30s for our friends in the mountains. But folks, again, those winds are going to feel a lot colder. Let's take a look at your adventure cast as that cool down heads our way, folks. We still are in the middle of winter today. 46 degrees overnight, 27 degrees tomorrow, only getting up to 39 degrees. And coming up, we'll talk more about this cold front, the timing of the front and what you can expect where you live. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Monday morning, as you can see, as folks gradually start their mornings, as you can see on your screen, still not looking bad out there. Traffic moving along smoothly, even with a slight increase in the amount of cars out there. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Boise police are looking for an endangered woman. 60-year-old Brenda Hardinger walked away from a care facility on West Smoke Ranch Avenue in Boise. Police say she does have dementia. She has gray hair, green eyes, and was last seen wearing a cowboy hat and blue jeans. And she expressed interest in going to Yellowstone. Police say it's possible that she may be hitchhiking. If you see her, please call 911 or Boise Police at 208-377-6790. And today marks one week since a devastating earthquake struck in Turkey and Syria. The death toll rose well above 30,000 and many more are feared dead. The prime window for rescue now closed, but hope's not out just yet. MTS Yitab gives us a look there. These apocalyptic scenes are as far as the eye can see. As we drove through Hate, we couldn't find a single habitable building. For those whose lives were spared by the massive quake, life is now an unrelenting misery, especially for those desperately hoping their loved ones are somehow still alive. My mother and sister are still under the rubble, and I can't reach them, says Didim Jelik. My soul is gone. They're dying under the rubble, and I'm dying here. As aid trickles in, the distribution has been slow and haphazard. For those looking for something warm to wear, donated clothes are left in piles on the street. Food, infant formula and diapers are available in some areas, but none of it is a substitute for what's been lost. At one of the many makeshift tent cities, we met Nuri Sinikoglu. He now shelters across the street from the apartment building he was raised in, which is now in ruins. Sini Koglu tells us his parents were killed in the quake and that they've only found his mother's remains. How long can you live like this for? Everyone here is leaving, he says. If we find my father, then we will leave too, because there isn't a single building here left to live in. The mood over the past week has gone from shock to grief to anger. Anger at their government, who they say knew this area was vulnerable to powerful earthquakes and they say didn't do enough to protect the people. This man is smashing the logo of a prominent construction company. He's one of many who blame shoddy building practices for the near total devastation. Turkish authorities have started arresting property developers and have issued arrest warrants for over 100 more. But critics of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan say he's trying to deflect blame from his own government's major failings. But not everyone is casting blame. Sini Koglu wants to appeal for help instead. I'd like to speak to the American president, Joe Biden, he says. Let's please put politics aside and help the people of Turkey. Infiaz Tayyip, CBS News. President Erdogan has vowed to rebuild all the destroyed buildings across southern Turkey within a year. But with recovery crews still struggling to comb through the towering piles of rubble, it's hard to see how he'll be able to keep that promise. And happening today here in Idaho, the Caldwell School Board is holding a meeting, police warning those attending to be respectful. This comes after the last regularly scheduled meeting broke out in chaos following a proposed policy on gender identity. 
On today's agenda, the proposed policy is listed under the superintendent report for discussion and information. The meeting is being held at the Caldwell School District office and it starts at 7 p.m. Caldwell's chief of police says if there is violence or threats of violence, police will take appropriate action against those individuals. And Idaho snowpack is not keeping the pace that it set in December, but it's still just above average. Meteorologists at the National Weather Service station here in Boise are optimistic that this year's snowpack will be a good one. Across the southern part of the state, so an above normal snowpack, especially in the southern half, is, is really good news for our overall water supply situation. There's still a chance, a really good chance, actually, that the uh, Panhandle region, the northern half of the state, catches up to normal. Now, one winter will not pull Idaho out of the long-term drought, but it is good for reservoirs. You can go to our website to see compares, comparisons of this year to years past. And Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and there are an array of events this week to help you celebrate. Romancing the Pen at the Old Idaho State Penitentiary is tomorrow from noon to 9 p.m. Adult admission is $10 each, or you can purchase pairs at a special $2 for $14 price. Cookie and beer pairing at Loose Screw Brewing is from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. Tango dancing at the warehouse is from 7 to 9 p.m., and that event is free for all ages. And Love is on the Rocks at the Knitting Factory goes from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Tickets start at $15. For more information and to learn about other events happening this week, you can head to IdahoNews.com. Well, the Chiefs, they are now Super Bowl 57 champions. The final score, a close one, 38-35. to 35. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes says it took his team some time to really have fun playing, which helped them clinch the win. You have to enjoy this moment. You can't, you can't let the moment overtake you. Um, and um, I thought the guys did that in the second half, and they fought to the very end. Um, and that's all you can ask. Uh, these guys leave everything they have on the football field. Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts, meantime, says it was turnovers that impacted their game. This makes the Chiefs' second title in just four seasons. Yeah, you can just feel the energy coming off him from that win. <laughs> yes, exciting and a great game too. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about the weather because that is what our eyes are on, folks. A cold front moving through today. That's going to bring even colder conditions, folks. We're saying ta-ta to some of that sunshine as well. Our ski report, though, is looking good, folks. Um, you can take a look here, courtesy of Brundage Mountain up here in the northern part of the state, we're looking up at Brundage, 87% or 87 inches. Bogus at 55. You can see Tamarack at 68. Sun Valley sitting at a whopping 93 inches, folks. And I have to go over to the eastern side of the state to check out some of that powder. But today, this morning, we're looking at cold, cold front moving into the region, folks. You can see this high level cloud deck moving down to the southeast. Folks, this is what's ushering in low pressure out of the Pacific that's going to bring us some rain for the Treasure Valley, but some nice accumulation for our friends up in the mountains. As far as us here, though, it's looking like the timing of this front is going to be a little slower, so not looking like it will move through until the evening hours by 4 o'clock, about a 68% chance. By 6 o'clock, a 41% chance, so make sure again that you're prepared for your evening commute to be a little wet, folks. We are expecting a wintry mix for our friends and a little higher elevations. We'll talk about accumulations as well, but our wind advisory is, we're already seeing winds move in, folks, but it is through 3 a.m. Tuesday for winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, though gusts are possible at 55 miles an hour. So folks, if you don't want anything blowing away, make sure that it is secured. Temperatures too, we begin the cool down because of that cold front. 46, that front moves through, getting us down to 39 for our Tuesday. And then slowly but surely, we begin to slowly warm back up near our average high, folks. But we'll also talk a little bit more coming up about what we can expect as far as timing of this storm and accumulations, folks, because one to four inches possible for the West Central Mountains. But here in the Treasure Valley, we have a little too much warming today, folks, so it looks like just rain. But as far as your morning commute, it is looking clear, but it is very chilly out there. Yeah, and one thing to keep an eye out for is that wind. Yes, definitely a two hands on the wheel kind of morning. Yeah, definitely keep that in mind. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, as you can see, we're gradually starting to see some more folks out on the road starting their Monday morning. But everything moving along nice and smooth, as you can see on your screen. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car and start your week off, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates.
Well, it's time now for our question of the day. Today's question is, Super Bowl weekend is the slowest weekend of the year for this. Oh, just popped one into my head. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys, we're on coffee this morning. Um, I'm thinking gyms, going to the oh, gym. Yes, big snacking weekend, yeah. you know, Super Bowl foods. Maybe not what you're thinking about yeah. a little bit. You're thinking more about, you know, eating, hanging out with yes. friends, maybe you having know. some drinks, you know. Eating enough wings to circle the earth three times. <laughs> hey, I was a part of that this yeah. <laughs> weekend, guys. All right, what do you think, Ashley? I'm thinking maybe traveling. Ooh, yeah. You know, you don't want to be driving yeah. during the big game because you want to yeah. watch it. You have to be able to watch it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's see what folks at home have to say. Oh, Joseph's filing taxes. Another thing probably not on your mind this weekend. I believe that. Yeah, yeah. no, last thing on your mind, possibly. It's a good yeah. guess, Joe. Lauren, movie attendance. That's yeah. a good one. Probably not going to theaters. You're probably... You know, yeah. sticking it at the home theater to watch yeah. the game. <laughs> Lots of eyes on screens, but uh, maybe not the big one. Yeah. Marv also saying the gym. He's with you. I'm feeling good about this one. Yeah, okay. That is a great guess. <laughs> well, if you think you know the answer, be sure to share your guesses on our Facebook page or our Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, officials arguing about what to do next after more unknown objects are found flying over our airspace. You're waking up to the CBS 2 Adventure Cast. Fairfield today, 28 degrees for the high. It's partly sunny, but going to be very breezy, folks. Overnight tonight, just 5 degrees with cloudy skies. And tomorrow, a high of 22 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Thank you, Sarah. Well, there appears to be some disagreement in Washington about what to do next after another high altitude object is shot out of the sky over the weekend. National correspondent Christine Frizzau reports. Two, one. Action. Another day, another U.S. military mission to bring down a flying object over North American airspace, including Sunday over Lake Huron, as well as Friday over Alaska, then assisting Canada in taking down one on Saturday. It represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft, uh, so I gave the order to take it down. The quick responses, though, followed a slower one. The initial spotting of what was deemed a Chinese surveillance balloon allowed to float across the country for days until it could be safely shot down over water. They do appear somewhat trigger happy, although this is certainly preferable to the permissive environment that they showed when the Chinese spy balloon was coming over some of our most sensitive sites. The incidents amplifying political differences between Democrats and Republicans, as well as the rocky U.S.-China relationship. This administration thus far hasn't uh, set a very good example of standing up to China. The fact that he doesn't acknowledge the fact that uh, what is happening here is alarming and puts our nation in peril uh, is itself alarming. Um, you know, we don't exactly have the A-team in place right now, which is also more than unfortunate. Even some Democrats calling for more transparency from the White House. I have real concerns about why the uh, administration is not being more forthcoming with everything that it knows. But Congressman Jim Himes and others acknowledge there is a lot that just isn't yet known, including what these latest objects even were, what countries they were from, and if we're finding more because there are more, or we're simply just now looking for them. Congress should look at that. That's the question we have to answer. Why, as far back as the Trump administration, did no one know about this? Answers for now still being located. The week ahead just as likely to bring far more uncertainty. A new normal for now, unable to escape the political blame game. I'm Christine Frizzau reporting. Well, Americans who are currently in Russia are being told to depart the country as soon as possible. A travel advisory from the U.S. State Department says U.S. citizens should, quote, exercise increased caution due to the risk of wrongful detentions. According to the State Department, Russian security services are also targeting foreign and international organizations that they deem, quote, undesirable. And today's number of the day touches on ways the United States is helping Ukraine. A Scott Rasmussen national survey found 43% of voters say Congress should continue to provide funding and weapons to Ukraine. The survey found that 38% say Congress should not, while 20% are not sure. The survey also found that 55% of voters approve of the decision to send U.S. tanks to help Ukraine, and 44% would favor sending U.S. fighter jets. However, just 23% would favor sending American soldiers. 
All right, let's switch gears. Talk weather, folks, because it was a nice sunny weekend. Yeah. But cold air already beginning to move in this morning, folks. Yeah, kind of like what you called it earlier, a little false spring that we had over the weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second winter is coming our yeah. way, folks, <laughs> if you've ever seen that meme, by the way. <laughs> but let's take a look outside this morning, folks, because it is looking pretty clear, though we're still awaiting that high-level cloud cover to move in from that cold front. We'll talk timing and show you in just a moment. But as far as starting the day, folks, we do have 10-mile-an-hour winds, which is taking off an additional 10 degrees on these temperatures you see here. So while at 6 a.m. we're saying 30 degrees, it's going to feel like 20 degrees. Same goes for 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. Folks, this cold front bringing in those northerly winds that are, of course, very chilly. So let's talk this next weather maker because it is moving in. That cold front is set for this afternoon, but tonight is when we will see that precipitation move in for us here in the Treasure Valley, though it is looking like it will just be rain. So this is that fast moving front, low pressure swinging in out of the Pacific into our region, bringing this strong trough. We can see evening rain and some snow for our friends in the mountains. Let's talk about what we can expect as far as accumulations because the West Central Mountains could see anywhere between one to four inches. The Boise Mountains, anywhere between one to two. And the Treasure Valley, we're looking at trace amounts to less than a half of an inch, folks. Today's warming up to the mid 40s, not quite enough to get us any accumulations here on our valley floors. But with that cold front pushing through, that cold air could net some flurries. So, folks, we will see. But this evening, again, be ready for your evening commute to be wet, folks. We are looking at that hanging on through the evening hours. But at least by tomorrow morning, we will start to see clearing just that cloud cover beginning to move on out. So let's take a look at your seven day forecast. 46 for the high today, folks. That cold front going to quickly cool us down to that rain snow mix. And then on Tuesday, we're looking at 39 for your Valentine's Day, though it is going to be cold. Just look at those overnight lows, folks. Again, a very nice weekend with much warmer temperatures. But again, winter is here and it is going to continue. The good news, at least we are just looking at a little more sunshine, a little warming, of course, after this system moves through. Yeah, like you mentioned, maybe a two hand on the wheel morning from those winds that we're going to be seeing. Yeah, especially if you are traveling between Boise and Mountain Home, <laughs> folks, always just make sure that's an especially windy area. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, thank CBS2 you. and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, as you can see, everything moving along nice and smooth. Not too many folks out on the road yet and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down this morning. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. Coming up on CBS2 News, neighbors in Ohio are concerned after a train derailment. The lawsuit's underway after it releases hazardous chemicals into the community. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. People in Ohio are suing a railway company after a train carrying hazardous chemicals derailed near their homes earlier this month. The lawsuit is calling on Norfolk Southern to pay for medical screenings and related care for anyone living within a 30 mile radius of the accident. The residents of East Palestine started to return home Wednesday after environmental regulators determined that the air quality is safe. A separate class action lawsuit was filed Tuesday, accusing the rail company of failing to maintain its tracks and equipment. And East Palestine locals are being told that their drinking water is safe after that train derailment. The superintendent of the East Palestine Water and Wastewater Department says he had the plant checked every three to four hours around the clock and anything dangerous that may have gotten into the supply is still below the detectable limit. You're measuring essentially for parts per billion. So if you have a billion grains of sand, you're trying to detect one of those grains and we have not detected any in our VOCs. The samplers pull water that's piped in from each of the five wells in the village. They're looking for compounds that can dissolve in soil and vaporize in air. This is an ongoing process and more samples will be taken this week. And despite officials calling off the evacuation and saying that it is safe to return, some locals are saying what they're seeing is abnormal and it is still not safe for animals or humans. Kyle Alexander reports locals are sounding the alarm, reporting health issues in their pets that they believe are linked to the train derailment. Taylor Holzer and his family run Parker Dairy. It's just outside East Palestine's original evacuation zone. 
Taylor is an ODNR registered fox keeper. A couple of his foxes broke their legs trying to run after the initial derailment. One of his foxes even died. Out of nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and um, he had liquid diarrhea and just went very fast. Taylor tells me all of his foxes have been sick and acting different since the weekend. Some have abnormally puffy faces, including the one he's holding. He says they are not eating properly. Many are dealing with stomach issues and are acting lethargic. This isn't how a fox should act. He's very weak, limp. He, his eyes are very like watery and weepy. Some of the foxes are pacing rapidly in their pen, another sign they are not well. Taylor says the train derailment is causing all of these issues. Smoke and chemicals from the train, uh, it's the only thing that could cause it because it doesn't just happen out of nowhere. The chemicals that we're being told are safe in the air, that's definitely not safe. For the animals? It's for animals or people. Taylor hopes justice is served for the animals and people of East Palestine. People's cats are getting sick and dying and people's other birds that they have in their house that they weren't being able to evacuate either. Just, it's not safe. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, Idaho's snowpack won't be enough to get us out of the drought. Why experts still have an optimistic outlook. Plus, Valentine's Day is tomorrow. A look ahead at some events happening around the Treasure Valley. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be back with your top stories at the top of the hour. Stay with us. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, more unknown flying objects shot down over the U.S., what we know about these latest airspace invasions. Plus, one week after a deadly earthquake shakes Turkey, why neighbors there aren't giving up hope for their search for survivors. And the Caldwell School Board meets again today, why police are giving out a warning to those set to attend. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for starting your week out with us. This is a live look from downtown Boise. It is Monday, February 13th, 2023. I'm Ashley Carter. Yeah, and I'm Sarah Jacobson filling in for Vasily Varlamos today. And Ashley, yeah, a beautiful weekend. It yeah, was it, oh, it, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. <laughs> it felt like spring. Um, mm -hmm. Sarah and I were both very excited about it, as you can tell. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Lots of sunshine, folks. But we're now tracking a cold front, and that's going to bring big changes our way, folks. So, yeah, if you were excited for spring, second winter is here. Let's take a look outside because winds are about 10 miles an hour right now, or between 3 and 10 miles an hour. That is taking down our feels like temperature, folks. 29 degrees in Boise, though some areas are seeing a 10 degree wind chill this morning. So keep that in mind as you're heading out the door this morning. We are going to be sitting at freezing at about 9 a.m. Today, highs getting into the mid to upper 40s, but that cold front will be moving in around 1 to 3 o'clock. That's going to quickly plunge our temperatures. We are looking at bringing some precipitation as well with a rain snow mix. Us here in the Treasure Valley though, looking like we will just be seeing rain folks. Let's take a look at our chance of precipitation though, because it is looking good right around commute time, though it will quickly taper off as we head into your Valentine's Day. So temperatures today in the mid 40s folks, we are looking at low 30s for some areas of our mountains, 39 in Idaho City. That cold front will bring winds 20 to 30 miles an hour folks. So again, it will be much chillier about a 10 degree cool down from what you see on those temperatures. So our adventure cast today, breezy conditions moving to rain 46 degrees tonight. Overnight lows 27 degrees with cloud cover and tomorrow we're looking at highs of just 39 degrees. But coming up, we'll talk more about this cold front pushing through a wind advisory going into effect. We'll also talk snow accumulations for our friends in the mountains. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as you can see, on your screen, everything looking nice and smooth. Not too many folks out on the road yet. 
Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down as you start your week. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, Boise police are looking for an endangered woman. 60-year-old Brenda Hardinger walked away from a care facility on West Smoke Ranch Avenue in Boise. Police say she has dementia, she has gray hair, green eyes, and was last seen wearing a cowboy hat and blue jeans, and she expressed interest in going to Yellowstone. Police say it's possible she may be hitchhiking, so if you see her, please call 911 or Boise Police at 208-377-6790. And questions are growing about what is happening in the skies above North America. In the last eight days, four flying objects have been shot down by the U.S. military. While one is suspected to have been spying on military sites, officials haven't said what the others may be. Jared Hill has more from New York. The U.S. military shot down yet another unidentified flying object Sunday. That marks a total of four takedowns, starting with the Chinese spy balloon that was destroyed over a week ago off the coast of South Carolina. What's gone on the last, uh, you know, two weeks or so, 10 days, has been uh, nothing short of um, craziness. The latest above the Great Lakes region in Michigan. The Pentagon says it's likely the same object that caused airspace over Montana to be shut down on Saturday. That's also when Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau asked the U.S. to shoot a different unidentified object out of the sky. That one above the Yukon. It represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft, uh, so I gave the order to take it down. In Alaska Friday, the U.S. took down an object that's said to be the size of a small bus. In the past, the U.S. just hasn't paid much attention to those balloons. But this Chinese balloon, was, was a game changer. That one suspected of spying over nuclear sites taken down last weekend, but officials aren't sure or aren't saying where the others came from or what they were doing. A Department of Defense official says they've been more closely scrutinizing U.S. airspace in recent weeks, which might explain the increase in activity. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, lawmakers are considering tougher regulations to stop U.S. technology from getting in the hands of the Chinese military. Jared Hill, CBS News. And today marks one week since a devastating earthquake struck in Turkey and Syria. The death toll rose well above 30,000 and many more are feared dead. The prime window for rescue now closed, but hope's not out just yet. In Turkey, searchers rescued a father and his 11-year-old daughter from the rubble more than 140 hours after they were buried. And rescuers pulled a woman alive from the rubble some 175 hours after the first of the two major quakes struck the region. And happening today here in Idaho, the Caldwell School Board is holding a meeting, police warning those attending to be respectful. This comes after the last regularly scheduled meeting broke out in chaos following a proposed policy on gender identity. Now on today's agenda, the proposed policy is listed under the superintendent report for discussion and information. The meeting is being held at the Caldwell School District office and it starts at 7 p.m. Caldwell's chief of police says if there is violence or threats of violence, police will take appropriate action against those individuals. And Idaho's snowpack is not keeping the pace that is set in December, but it's still just above average. Meteorologists at the National Weather Service Station here in Boise are optimistic that this year's snowpack will be a good one. Across the southern part of the state, so an above normal snowpack, especially in the southern half, is, is really good news for our overall water supply situation. There's still a chance, a really good chance, actually, that the uh, Panhandle region, the northern half of the state, catches up to normal. One winter won't pull Idaho out of the long-term drought, but it is good for reservoirs. You can go to our website to see comparisons of this year to years past. And hey, Valentine's Day, it's tomorrow, and there are an array of events this week to help you celebrate. Romancing the pen at the old Idaho State Penitentiary is tomorrow from noon to 9 p.m. Adult admission is $10 each, or you can purchase pairs at a special two for $14 price. Cookie and beer pairing at Loose Screw Brewing is from 2 to 7, or 2 to 9 p.m., pardon me. Tango dancing at the warehouse is from 7 to 9 p.m. That event is free for all ages. And Love is on the Rocks at the Knitting Factory goes from 7 to 9.30 p.m. 
Tickets starting at $15. For more information and to learn more about other events happening this week, you can head to IdahoNews.com. All right, yeah, lots of fun stuff. Yeah, some exciting events and hopefully happening indoors because our weather, it's its a changing. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> again, we uh, hold on for that roller coaster yeah. because it was feeling like spring over the weekend, folks, but this cold front headed our way is going to remind us it is indeed winter. But first, let's take a look at a ski report courtesy of Brundage Mountain Resort. Right now, Brundage is sitting at 87 inches for their snow depth. Bogus sitting at 55, Tamarack at 68. Sun Valley, though, taking the cake at 93 inches for their snow depth, even beating out Jackson Hole. So hey, folks, you might want to be heading east if you want some fresh powder. Let's talk about these cold front moving in, folks, because this high level, oops, move back a little further. This high level deck of cloud cover is that cold front expected to begin to move in again with breezy conditions ahead of some precipitation, our storm system that's going to bring rain to the Treasure Valley and some snow accumulations to our mountains over the next at least 12 hours. So here's a look at our precipitation chances. Everything looking clear. We'll see our front move through between noon to two o'clock and then the rain will move in. We're looking at that around the evening commute folks. So make sure your windshield wipers are ready to go. That weather advisor we have a wind advisory folks you'll be feeling as soon as you step out the door this morning. It's through Tuesday at 3 a.m. So tomorrow morning winds 20 to 30 miles per hour possible gusts up to 55 miles an hour. So folks, if you don't want anything blowing away, make sure that it is secured. Our temperatures will be taking a quick dip after that cold front moves through today. Highs of 46 quickly plummeting to 39 degrees and then we slowly by surely day by day start to warm back up to that near average high. But coming up, we'll talk a little more about our accumulations for snow fall for our friends up in the mountains. Us here in the Treasure Valley, though, we are looking at rain, though. There is a chance for trace amounts of snow to a half of an inch, but right now not looking very likely. But your morning commute as we're waking up this morning is looking clear, but it's cold and be ready for some breezy conditions. Yeah, that wind is not messing around today. Nope, definitely make <laughs> sure that you are ready for it, folks, especially if you are traveling down to the east of the Boise area. Yeah, definitely keep that in mind. Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update on our traffic conditions. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Thanks, ladies. Uh, good start. Very quiet. Good driving conditions, of course, like you mentioned. And uh, we're doing just fine with speeds. 84. You can see volume not that heavy in some of those camera shots. And uh, even as you get into uh, Meridian, which is usually a typical hot spot at those merge areas, a little too early for that. Uh, good to go all the way around, away from the freeways, unless you come across closures. One of the most recent, as of last week, uh, 10 mile barricades up between Columbia and Lake Hazel. And that's scheduled to go all the way until the end of April. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, gas prices nationwide are starting a bit lower this week, but here in Idaho, expect to be paying a bit more. Our average is now at 367 a gallon. The national average sitting at 342, which is five cents lower than prices were at the start of last week. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up is going to be the Sinclair Station on North Cole Road in Boise. It's at 349 a gallon there. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, fans celebrating overnight after a close Super Bowl. What's next after the game? Plus, a surprising abs absence from the big game, why the White House says there was no presidential pregame interview. And of course, it's time now for our question of the day. First, taking a look at Friday's question. A survey says about 20% of men use this as their computer password. We had lots of great guesses, but the answer was their favorite sports team. Now for today's question, Super Bowl weekend is the slowest weekend of the year for this. Hmm, what could it be? It's 614. Welcome back, folks. Ontario today, a high of 44 degrees, but quickly those, that cold front will move through, bringing rain to the region. Overnight tonight, cloudy skies, 28 degrees, and tomorrow, 49 degrees with partly cloudy skies. <laughs> well, Kansas City fans erupting as their team takes home the trophy. 
We're taking a live look in Kansas City, Missouri this morning as the team heads back home after an intense game. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes was the game's MVP despite taking a hit on his recently injured ankle. Fans spending the night celebrating after a nail-biting game. It was definitely nerve-wracking, but we did it. Yeah. Of course, Eagles fans are less enthused. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah, it's a tough one. Kansas City has already released plans for its championship parade, which will take place on Wednesday. Schools in the Kansas City metro area even canceling classes to allow students and teachers to watch and participate. And last night's Super Bowl had plenty of action and excitement, but one thing it did not have was a presidential pregame interview. National correspondent Christine Frizzau explains why we didn't see one this year. It is a, a great honor and privilege to introduce President George W. Bush, who joins us from the White House Rose Garden. A relatively new tradition, the Super Bowl presidential pregame interview was carried on by President Barack Obama, who twice sat down with Fox's Bill O'Reilly before the big game. Do you deny oh, that you're a man who wants to redistribute wealth? Absolutely. As did President Donald Trump, though in 2018 he opted out of an interview with NBC when that network was hosting the game. Last year, President Joe Biden did sit down with NBC, and back on Fox this year, there was hope from some he would keep the tradition alive. The White House insisting President Biden did agree to do an interview with Fox Soul, a streaming service that caters to black Americans. But Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre tweeted Fox canceled the interview, a claim Fox appeared to dispute later, though the interview never happened. Since becoming president, Joe Biden has not granted any interviews to Fox, the top watched cable network, which is also often highly critical of his administration. Still, some are calling the decision not to sit down with them before the Super Bowl a missed opportunity. Why in the world would a president who apparently intends to run again lose the opportunity to speak to 100 million people, which comprises Democrats, Republicans, independents, and they want to see him look good. Richard Vatz, Towson University professor of rhetoric and communication, says it could have helped President Biden with messaging. I think he could have tied this to his unity theme, that I am the president of unity, and this is a, this is a perfect example of the country coming together with a great professional clash of two great teams who have fought all the way to the Super Bowl. But between the response to the alleged Chinese spy balloon, a federal investigation into his son Hunter Biden's finances, and a myriad of Republican criticisms of the 46th president, some say he'll work on the messaging in his own way. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. And switching gears, the Super Bowl also giving restaurants and businesses a boost. And the business boom isn't over this week. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, they're expecting to see another spike in sales. So as the Super Bowl crowd leaves, many are spending today getting ready. Make sure the restaurant is nice and beautiful with roses, decorations, all that good stuff. So it takes, it takes uh, I would say, a village <laughs> to make sure that it all comes through. Bookings for upscale dinner reservations in the U.S. surged 228 percent on Valentine's Day, and that's according to one survey by Open Table. Loving his heart glasses too. I Getting know. Getting in the spirit. Yeah, and could have used them for that sunshine yes. over the weekend, but I guess not going to need them in the upcoming days. Yeah, no, we are doing another roller coaster ride, yeah. Ashley. Cold front moving through today, folks. Going to bring cold conditions back to the region. A reminder, it is still winter, but looking outside this morning, we are still awaiting that cold front. We are looking at high level clouds and very cold out there, folks, as we begin to see those winds out of the northwest. Let's talk about starting your day with your frosted weather wheats because we do have winds about 10 miles an hour through the I-84 corridor. So again, taking us down another 10 degrees from what you see there on the screen, folks. It is a chilly morning out there. Just make sure you are bundling up. Let's talk about this next weather maker, this cold front moving through in the afternoon, and it's going to bring a chance of some rain and snow to our region. We'll talk about that in just a second, but low pressure again off the Pacific will quickly begin moving in this morning. We can already see that cloud deck beginning to form folks, bringing us that big trough and that's going to bring some precipitation. Again, rain is expected for the Treasure Valley. We have a chance of some light snow later in the evening, but for our mountains looking anywhere between one to four inches. So let's talk about the snow accumulation breakdown. The West Central Mountains could see anywhere between one to four inches. The Boise Mountains anywhere between one to two inches and folks later tonight, we're looking at that front around the morning commute precipitation moving in. There is a chance for us to see a 
a trace to a half of an inch in snow accumulations. But right now it is looking like rain, folks. We'll keep you updated if that does change. But you can see that system beginning to move in, folks. Again, expected to bring not heavy accumulations to us here in the Treasure Valley. It's still the warm temperatures beginning to um, continue to push to the east. But as far as that precipitation, only going to hang on until at least Tuesday morning by the evening on your Valentine's Day, it should move out. Let's take a look at that seven day forecast. 46 degrees for the high today, breezy conditions, and then we see our storm system move in. It should be pushed out by the time we hit Valentine's Day, folks, but it's still going to stay cold with those overnight lows as we start to see clearing. But folks, this morning also clear out there as we await that cold front. Again, our best chance for any type of precipitation happens this evening, whether it will be snow or rain right now looking very low for us here in the Treasure Valley. Yeah, definitely something to keep in mind along with the wind, as Sarah's mm -hmm, mentioned, yeah. a two hand on the wheel type of day. Yeah, especially if you're heading towards the Magic Valley between Boise and Mountain Home. Definitely keep those hands on the wheel, folks. Yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update on our traffic conditions. Still not uh, too much going, which is good. If you're getting ready to get out the door, don't have anything big to get in the way as far as uh, 84 at this stage or 184 or other routes for that matter, other than construction, which can, of course, send you out of your way. Still some uh, closure spots. Of course, uh, the big projects are in Meridian, Locust Grove, and Victory, all four directions for a roundabout. And in Nampa, same thing, all four directions. Robinson Road, Airport Road over the next few months for that. The uh, latest roundabout going in there. Franklin is still closed. Franklin Boulevard between Cherry Lane and Eustick in Nampa as well. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your Monday morning, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, Valentine's Day just around the corner. The chocolate, one study says, may make the perfect gift for your sweetheart. And later, Americans being told to leave Russia this morning. The warning from officials here in the U.S. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. COVID-19 is still spreading in the U.S., but the amount of daily cases is declining. According to the New York Times COVID tracker, we're now averaging under 40,000 cases per day. Hospitalized COVID-19 patients also down 11% in the past two weeks, and daily deaths have declined 15% to an average of 442 per day. Well, hey, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, and what better time to spoil yourself or that special someone with chocolate? New research out of the UK sheds light on why we find it so seductive. CBS's Ian Lee reports from London. Welcome to Moss. My name is Aaron. I'll be your chocolatier for today. Anthony and Trenna are massive chocoholics. The charm of chocolate lured them to this London cooking class. What's what to love about chocolate? Different varieties, the different flavors you can get. But chocolate's power of pleasure puzzled scientists at the University of Leeds in England. We've been looking into the texture of the chocolates, lubrication or tactile sensation rather than the taste. That melt in the mouth feeling led researchers to create an artificial tongue, which cracked the code, revealing it all comes down to the chocolate's fat. Why is it nice on the tongue? It makes it smooth, it makes it slippery, it makes it, it reduces the resistance. Scientists say that lubrication makes for a more enjoyable experience. And it doesn't come as a surprise to chief chocolatier Paul Stradling. It's to do with that natural, the fact the cocoa butter is in it, and it's actually the only natural fat in the world that melts a body temperature. Researchers found that smooth sensation comes down to the location of the fat, not the amount. But if you put more fats on the top surface of the chocolates, then we wouldn't need much of a fat in the body of the chocolates. And that got them wondering if you need fat at all. So you replace the fats with the proteins to get the same texture. Exactly, yes. And that would be healthier? It would be more nutritious for sure. Letting people indulge their love of chocolate without the love handles. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Idaho's snowpack won't be enough to get us out of drought. Why experts still have an optimistic outlook. And of course, here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. 
After all of your favorites tonight, you can join us right back here for CBS 2 News at 10 p.m. And don't forget about our question of the day. Today's question is Super Bowl weekend is the slowest weekend of the year for this. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, one week after a deadly earthquake shakes Turkey, why neighbors there aren't giving up hope on their search for survivors. Plus, the Cald Caldwell School Board meets again today, why police are giving out a warning to those set to attend. And the Chiefs take home the Super Bowl, what the winning team says helped them bring home the win. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Happy Monday, folks. You're waking up with CBS 2 News. Right now, we are sitting at about 29 degrees in downtown Boise. The winds about three miles an hour out of the southeast is going to be taking down some of that feels like temperatures for most areas that we aren't seeing it right now in downtown Boise. As you're heading out the door this morning, you want to make sure you bundle up. It is going to be cold. We're looking at freezing by 9 a.m., getting up to 38 by 11 a.m. We are expecting a cold front to push through, folks, though our highs will get into the mid 40s today. That cold front will quickly push us down colder and usher in some precipitation, folks. It's looking like we will see rain beginning beginning in the Treasure Valley, possibly changing to snow later in the evening, though accumulations looking very um, low for us here in the Treasure Valley. Good for our mountains, though. Let's take a look at our chance of precipitation. Of course, this is moving in just in time for your evening commute, so make sure your windshield wipers are ready, folks. After that, we begin to see dwindling precipitation chances for the rest of the week through Sunday. So high temperatures today still getting into the mid to upper 40s. Temperatures in the mountains in the low 30s, though Idaho City getting to 39 degrees today. Of course, that cold front will move through quickly, cooling things and bringing that precipitation. Let's take a look at your adventure cast and coming up. We'll talk more about the timing of this storm, depending on where you live in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Monday morning, as you can see, we're gradually starting to see some more cars out on the road. Some more folks starting their week out. But as you can see, traffic moving along smoothly. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, Boise police are looking for an endangered woman. 60 year old Brenda Hardinger walked away from a care facility on West Smoke Ranch Avenue in Boise. Police say she has dementia. She has gray hair, green eyes and was last seen wearing a cowboy hat and blue jeans and she expressed interest in going to Yellowstone. Police say it's possible that she may be hitchhiking. If you see her, please call 911 or Boise Police at 208-377-6790. And today marks one week since a devastating earthquake struck in Turkey and Syria. The death toll rose well above 30,000 and many more are feared dead. The prime window for rescue now closed, but hopes not out just yet. Imtiaz Tieb gives us a look there. These apocalyptic scenes are as far as the eye can see. As we drove through Hate, we couldn't find a single habitable building. For those whose lives were spared by the massive quake, life is now an unrelenting misery, especially for those desperately hoping their loved ones are somehow still alive. <laughs> My mother and sister are still under the rubble, and I can't reach them, says Didim Jelik. My soul is gone. They're dying under the rubble, and I'm dying here. As aid trickles in, the distribution has been slow and haphazard. For those looking for something warm to wear, donated clothes are left in piles on the street. Food, infant formula, and diapers are available in some areas, but none of it is a substitute for what's been lost. At one of the many makeshift tent cities, we met Nuri Sinikoglu. He now shelters across the street from the apartment building he was raised in, which is now in ruins. Sinikoglu tells us his parents were killed in the quake and that they've only found his mother's remains. How long can you live like this for? Everyone here is leaving, he says. If we find my father, then we will leave too, because there isn't a single building here left to live in. The mood over the past week has gone from shock to grief 
to anger, anger at their government, who they say knew this area was vulnerable to powerful earthquakes, and they say didn't do enough to protect the people. This man is smashing the logo of a prominent construction company. He's one of many who blame shoddy building practices for the near total devastation. Turkish authorities have started arresting property developers and have issued arrest warrants for over 100 more. But critics of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan say he's trying to deflect blame from his own government's major failings. But not everyone is casting blame. Sini Koglu wants to appeal for help instead. I'd like to speak to the American president, Joe Biden, he says. Let's please put politics aside and help the people of Turkey. Infiaz Tayyip, CBS News. President Erdogan has vowed to rebuild all the destroyed buildings across southern Turkey within a year. But with recovery crews still struggling to comb through the towering piles of rubble, it's hard to see how he'll be able to keep that promise. And happening today here in Idaho, the Caldwell School Board is holding a meeting, police warning those attending to be respectful. This comes after the last regularly scheduled meeting broke out in chaos following a proposed policy on gender identity. On today's agenda, the proposed policy is listed under the superintendent report for discussion and information. The meeting is being held at the Caldwell School District office and it starts at 7 p.m. Caldwell's chief of police says if there is violence or threats of violence, police will take appropriate action against those individuals. Well, Idaho's snowpack, it's not keeping the same pace that it set in December, but it's still just above average. Meteorologists at the National Weather Service Station here in Boise are optimistic that this year's snowpack, it'll be a good one. Across the southern part of the state, so an above normal snowpack, especially in the southern half, is, is really good news for our overall water supply situation. There's still a chance, a really good chance, actually, that the uh, Panhandle region, the northern half of the state, catches up to normal. Now, one winter won't pull Idaho out of the long-term drought, but it is good for reservoirs. You can go to our website to see comparisons of this year to years past. Well, hey, Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and there are an array of events to this week to help you celebrate. Romancing the pen at the old Idaho State Penitentiary is tomorrow from noon to 9 p.m. Adult admission, $10 each, or you can purchase pairs at a special two for $14 price. Cookie and beer pairing at Loose Screw Brewing is from 2 to 9 p.m. Tango dancing at the warehouse from 7 to 9 p.m. That event, free for all ages. And Love is on the Rocks at the Knitting Factory goes from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Tickets starting at $15.00. For more information and to learn more about other events happening this week, you can head to IdahoNews.com. Well, hey, the Chiefs are now Super Bowl 57 champions. The final score, it was a close one, 38-35. to Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes says it took his team some time to really have fun playing, which then helped them clinch the win. You have to enjoy this moment. You can't, you can't let the moment overtake you. Um, and um, I thought the guys did that in the second half, and they fought to the very end. Um, and that's all you can ask. Uh, these guys leave everything they have on the football field. Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts, meantime, says it was turnovers that impacted their game. This makes the Chiefs' second title in just four seasons. Oh, what a game. All right, congratulations to the yeah. Chiefs. But let's switch gears, talk about weather because change blowing our way. Yeah, not necessarily congratulating us here. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely no congrats, not the congratulations we were hoping for at least. But let's take a look at our ski report courtesy of Brundage Mountain Resort. It is looking good. Brundage at 87 inches for their snow depth. Bogus coming in at 55, 68 at Tamarack. But taking the cake is Sun Valley at 93 inches for their snow depth. Yeah, looking good, folks, and more snow headed our way. It's all because of this cold front. You can see it on this cloud deck right here, folks, beginning to move into the region. It's going to bring breezy conditions and open us, an, an, uh, woo, open us up to a low pressure system swinging in out of the southeast, folks. That, of course, is what's going to bring us a rain and snow 
depending on where you live. So right now, timing of this system is going to be just in time for our evening commute, folks. So make sure you have your windshield wipers ready for us here in the Treasure Valley. It looks like it will begin as rain with a chance of it moving over to a rain snow mix as we head further into the evening as this cold front continues to bring that cold air into the region. All because of this wind advisory for the upper Treasure Valley, the Magic Valley and the Owyhees through Tuesday at 3 a.m. Winds 20 to 30 miles per hour are possible, folks, but gusts are possible up to 50 five miles an hour. So folks, just make sure you keep everything secured that you don't want blowing away. That cold air is going to quickly cause a little bit of a roller coaster ride for our temperatures 46 down to 39 for your Valentine's Day Tuesday. And then we begin day by day, slowly beginning to warm back up to near normal folks. And coming up, we'll talk a little more about accumulations, what we can expect where and the timing of this system, of course. But as far as your morning commute this morning, it is cold out there, but it is looking clear. And at least after that dip that we'll be seeing, temperatures kind of climbing back up into the 40s. Oh, yeah. We'll slowly get back there, folks. It's just yeah. going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of patience that, that we're going to need. <laughs> that, too. We'll work on that as well. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's get a traffic update from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Well, it's been relatively quiet, although volume on the increase, getting reports of a possible uh, three-vehicle crash in the left lane just before you get to the Garrity Interchange going west. Of course, traffic volume is not that heavy, but uh, that'd be something to be aware of if you're just getting ready to get out the door in that general area. But uh, other than that, it's been good. A little bit of merge slowing, pretty minimal still coming east on I-84 in Meridian. And uh, 184, doing okay. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, it's time now for our question of the day. Today's question is Super Bowl weekend is the slowest weekend of the year for this. See, I'm going to stick with my answer of the gym. What about you, Ash? I like that one. You know, people probably more focused on snacking than... Going, yeah, definitely. You know, eating enough <laughs> wings like we talked about last week to circle the earth three times. Oh my gosh. Yep. Yeah. I was helping out with that this definitely weekend, no doubt. Definitely contributed, yes. <laughs> I think I'm going to stick with traveling. I like you know, that. Going to want to be somewhere, probably home yeah. during the big game, not yeah. going to be want to drive. Exactly. Driving. You want to be in front of your screen, yes. not, not your windshield. Yes. Ross says car sales. Oh. Yeah, less people looking to get that car or truck yeah. over the weekend. Not really the focus. Streaming Netflix, mm -hmm. Douglas. That's a great, that's a great guess. Yeah, these are also West Camping. Oh. Yeah. I have access to a TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to. <laughs> You never know. Sometimes you can jerry-rig something yeah. real fun up in the mountains. But Wes, yeah, no, a little too cold for that, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> some great guesses this morning. I really feel like it could be anything. Well, if you think you know the answer, share your guesses on our Facebook page or Twitter, and we'll, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, officials arguing about what to do next after more unknown objects are found flying over our airspace. You're waking up to CBS 2 News. Fairfield tomorrow or today, pardon me, you're looking at 28 degrees for the high, partly sunny, but it will get breezy in the evening. Tonight, overnight lows just 5 degrees with cloudy skies. And tomorrow, the high 22 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Thank you, Sarah. Well, there appears to be some disagreement in Washington about what to do next after another high altitude object is shot out of the sky over the weekend. National correspondent Christine Frizzau reports. Two, one, action. Another day, another U.S. military mission to bring down a flying object over North American airspace, including Sunday over Lake Huron, as well as Friday over Alaska, then assisting Canada in taking down one on Saturday. It represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft. Uh, so I gave the order to take it down. The quick responses, though, followed a slower one. The initial spotting of what was deemed a Chinese surveillance balloon allowed to float across the country for days until it could be safely shot down over water. They do appear somewhat trigger happy, although this is certainly preferable to the permissive environment that they showed when the Chinese spy balloon was coming over some of our most sensitive sites. The incidents amplifying political differences between Democrats and Republicans, as well 
well as the rocky U.S.-China relationship. This administration thus far hasn't uh, set a very good example of standing up to China. The fact that he doesn't acknowledge the fact that uh, what is happening here is alarming and puts our nation in peril uh, it, it is itself alarming. Um, you know, we don't exactly have the A-team in place right now, which is also more than unfortunate. Even some Democrats calling for more transparency from the White House. I have real concerns about why the uh, administration is not being more forthcoming with everything that it knows. But Congressman Jim Himes and others acknowledge there is a lot that just isn't yet known, including what these latest objects even were, what countries they were from, and if we're finding more because there are more, or we're simply just now looking for them. Congress should look at that. That's the question we have to answer. Why, as far back as the Trump administration, did no one know about this? Answers for now still being located. The week ahead just as likely to bring far more uncertainty. A new normal for now, unable to escape the political blame game. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Well, Americans who are currently in Russia are being told to depart the country as soon as possible. A travel advisory from the U.S. State Department says U.S. citizens should, quote, exercise increased caution due to the risk of wrongful detentions. According to the State Department, Russia's security services are also targeting foreign and international organizations that they deem, quote, undesirable. And today's number of the day touches on ways the United States is helping Ukraine. A Scott Rasmussen national survey found 43% of voters say Congress should continue to provide funding and weapons to Ukraine. The survey found that 38% say Congress should not, while 20% are not sure. All right, folks, let's switch gears. We're going to talk about a cold front moving through, but I do want to note that we're at least seeing a little bit of sunshine later in the day. If you're not noticing, say um, we are seeing our at least our sunset around six o'clock, but dusk by about 638. Yeah, definitely have noticed it's later in the day, which is exciting. No, exciting. You got to start off with a good thing, guys. Yeah. We have a little more sunlight for our day, but let's talk about this next storm system. A look outside right now, not seeing much, folks. It is clear, but it is very cold. Taking a look at those frost weather wheats. We are looking at winds right now about 10 miles an hour. That's taking our feels like temperatures another 10 degrees down from what you see on your screen. So about 19 degrees is what it's looking like 6 a.m. 7 a.m. about 18 degrees by 8 a.m. as we start to see that cloud cover moving in. So our next weather maker is all due to some low pressure out in the Gulf of Alaska swinging down as we speak and that's bringing that fast moving front. You can see this cloud deck right here. The leading edge of that cold front beginning to push in. That's what's going to bring us low pressure and some evening rain potentially turning to snow. Some good accumulations as well for our mountains. Let's talk about that because the West Central Mountains could see anywhere between one to four inches. Boise Mountains anywhere between one to two inches over the next at least 12 to 24 hours. For the Treasure Valley, we are looking a little warm. So again, it will begin as rain when it does fall during the morning commute, but we could see that change over to snow to a trace to a half of an inch for the Treasure Valley. So here's a look at our precipitation chances again that moving in out of the northwest right now we are seeing this on this model falling as snow folks but again accumulations looking very light looking anywhere between one to four inches for our friends in the mountains it's going to continue into the early morning hours of tuesday but luckily move out just in time by the afternoon of your valentine so seven day forecast for you 46 for the high today we are looking at overnight lows just 30 degrees then for your valentine's day a little cooler folks but we are slowly but surely going to warm day by day back up to near normal. But as far as today, be ready for breezy conditions mm -hmm. out there on the roads, though it is looking clear. We are awaiting that precipitation later in the day. Yeah, nice clear morning, but brace yourselves for that change in weather mm -hmm. later today as Sarah mentioned. Yep, gusts to up to 55 miles an hour possible, guys. Ooh, definitely prepare yourselves, prepare your homes as well. Yeah, don't want anyone thing flying away. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 650 this Monday morning, let's get a traffic update from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Nothing major going. We have a uh, disabled vehicle ID4 westbound uh, appears to be off on the right shoulder as you approach Garrity or as traffic's uh, headed that direction. Westbound doesn't appear to be a big issue. ID4 eastbound, there's been just a little bit of crowding in the uh, stretch near Garrity. And a little bit of merge slowing uh, further in at the, the uh, interchanges beyond 10 mile. It's been minimal. And a vehicle off on the shoulder, Eagle Road, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on Eagle Road northbound as you cross over the freeway. That has not been a, a big issue this morning so far. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan.
Thank you, Ron. When you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, neighbors in Ohio are concerned after a train derailment. The lawsuit's underway after it releases hazardous chemicals into the community. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. People in Ohio are suing a railway company after a train carrying hazardous chemicals derailed near their homes earlier this month. The lawsuit is calling on Norfolk Southern to pay for medical screenings and related care for any, anyone living within a 30-mile radius of the accident. Residents of East Palestine started to return home Wednesday after environmental regulators determined the air quality was safe. A separate class action lawsuit was filed Tuesday, accusing the rail company of failing to maintain its tracks and equipment. And despite officials calling off evacuations and saying it is safe to return, some locals are saying what they're seeing is abnormal and it's still not safe for animals or humans. Kyle Alexander reports locals are sounding the alarm, reporting health issues in their pets that they believe are linked to the train derailment. Taylor Holzer and his family run Parker Dairy. It's just outside East Palestine's original evacuation zone. Taylor is an ODNR registered fox keeper. A couple of his foxes broke their legs trying to run after the initial derailment. One of his foxes even died. Out of nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and um, he had liquid diarrhea and just went very fast. Taylor tells me all of his foxes have been sick and acting different since the weekend. Some have abnormally puffy faces, including the one he's holding. He says they are not eating properly. Many are dealing with stomach issues and are acting lethargic. This isn't how a fox should act. He's very weak, limp. He, his eyes are very like watery and weepy. Some of the foxes are pacing rapidly in their pen, another sign they are not well. Taylor says the train derailment is causing all of these issues. Smoke and chemicals from the train, uh, it's the only thing that could cause it because it doesn't just happen out of nowhere. The chemicals that we're being told are safe in the air, that's definitely not safe. For the animals? It's for animals or people. Taylor hopes justice is served for the animals and people of East Palestine. People's cats are getting sick and dying and people's other birds that they have in their house that they weren't being able to evacuate either. Just, it's not safe. Well, it's time now for our question of the day. That question, Super Bowl weekend, the slowest weekend of the year for this. That answer, weddings. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, can't have two big events like that in one weekend. Oh, I love it. I'd like to see it, though. All right. I know. Well, thank you for joining us. Our next newscast is coming up today at 11 a.m. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 mobile app. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.